Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'd like to introduce you to a book called Bible Journaling for the Fine Artist by Melissa Fisher and Kate Pfeiffer. I will, as usual, put a link in the description to this book if you would like to grab it for yourself or give it as a gift to someone else. And I will also put links to the art supplies that I use the most. Hopefully that's useful for you. So the book I think is invaluable because it doesn't just have pages of samples of illustrations that are good inspiration. It's not just simply, oh, this is pretty, copy it. There's a lot here about technique and it kind of meets you where you are. If you don't have any background in art, it starts from the beginning and I think it really helps you with a lot of theory. If you have a little bit more advanced experience in art, it'll give you maybe some tips and tricks you didn't already know about. And if you are an established fine artist, then use the pages as examples and, um, you know, instead of thinking of it as a tutorial, use it as an inspiration book to get you going, motivate you. So let's go through the sections and I will show you some of the pages that jumped out at me. Um, first of all, we talk about supplies, of course, so brush pens and colored pencils and erasers and acrylic paints and watercolors and all that good stuff. So Melissa and Kate are showing you in a beautiful way, by the way, this book is laid out so pretty. Um, they are giving you introductions to supplies, how to use water properly. Then they get into drawing tips and tricks. And I really like this section because they don't just assume that you already know how to draw a swan. You know, they help you understand the shapes kind of behind it or even some tracing ideas that might help. And then they help you go step by step and practice. So here's a bird and a rose and a building and a cake and the swan, which you'll see later, um, step by step, you know, here's the basic shapes and then add a little more detail and then finish it off and make it your own. And then here's that swan starting with a very simple little oval and building up to a pretty swan. So I think that's helpful and you'll see that throughout the book they continue in that way. Um, shading, you know, steps to shade, um, design element tips, color theory, how to put you know colors together that are going to work to tell your story, whether you're going to use soft pastels or you're going to use bold colors, how to use colors for emphasis. And then we get into lettering. And so it's from the basics of serif versus sans serif and then how to combine two different fonts in a pretty professional way so your lettering stands out. Putting lettering together in a layout and different ways to do that. And then they have two alphabets. You know, if you're not thrilled with your own handwriting, maybe you wanna work on learning some brush lettering. And so they have an alphabet here and a page to practice that and get kind of the proportions correct. And then also a sans serif, kind of a frivolous, festive little font here to go with it to kind of complement that more formal script. And then they're gonna take us into kind of why we Bible journal and then examples of, of ways to kind of think out of the box about it. And this was really special for me. I think it gave me some ideas that I hadn't already thought of. Um, you think of Bible journaling as just having your Bible in front of you, buying one that perhaps is made for journaling that has some areas in the margins where you can actually create art. And that's a little bit limiting. It's a great thing to do. However, the one that I purchased, I think I made a video about it. If I haven't, I'll do one soon. The one that I got from Zondervan, oh my goodness, that, that Bible paper is Bible paper thin, literally. And it's made for journaling, but in order to use wet media and paint on it, I'm going to have to use gesso and prepare the pages. And I don't want to deal with all that. So I'm just going to use colored pencils for mine. But I might have some favorite passages that I would like to do more involved art with. So maybe I'll take a sketchbook. Maybe I'll take something I can just grab from the dollar store to play around. Maybe I'll use my best 100% cotton watercolor paper for finished pieces. Maybe I will um, use a journal that I'm already using, just my chronological kind of catch-all, my brain journal. Maybe I'll just throw some of this into some of the pages. That's what's great about this book is that you can use the techniques in any of those ways. It does not have to be just for opening a Bible and putting art on the margins. 
So they have some examples. Kate, they'll tell you each section, kind of who wrote that section. So Kate had some ideas, excuse me, ideas here that I thought were helpful. First of all, favorite verse. This is a great idea. If this whole project seems very daunting, if you say, oh my gosh, am I doing the entire Bible? No, maybe just start with that one verse that has always stayed with you, you're really passionate about. I think you'll be more artful and you'll have more excitement for the project if you're starting with a verse that you really care about. So that kind of gets your feet wet. Then she had the suggestion of journaling your sermon notes. This is a great idea, whether you have a separate journal for it or if you put it in kind of your ongoing daily journal. And, you know, sit there and take notes and maybe even doodle a little. And then when you get home, journal those sermon notes using some of the ideas that you find in this book. That was a great idea. Daily devotional, that's kind of what I've started to do. Um, I am literally going cover to cover, reading the Bible from start to finish. And then I use colored pencils and I pull out the journaling Bible that I have and I read, you know, a couple passages each day and I decide, okay, I really like this verse and I pull that verse out and then I letter it off to the side. And that becomes kind of like homework. It's homework every day. Then we have topical Bible journaling and I'm going to read you what Kate said because I think it's poignant. She said, have you ever had a rough day and searched for uplifting scripture? Lay your worries aside and focus on your illustration. This is one of my favorite ways to Bible journal. Sitting down and illustrating a verse about what you're going through is one way you can meditate on a verse and pray about your situation. Taking this time to reflect on what God is teaching through his scripture can be productive, and I promise you the verse and illustration will carry you through the struggle. That's a great idea, and if you don't already have kind of a, a way to do that, to find the topics, just Google. Just sit down and Google and say Bible verses about blank, whatever's heavy on your heart that day, and pick one that speaks to you, and you can either then open up a Bibling journal, I mean, <laughs> a Bible journal, a journaling Bible. You can just open that up to that verse and put it on that page, or you can incorporate it in your sketchbook or just a scrap. or It doesn't matter where you put it. It matters what you're thinking while you do it. Um, she includes some of her favorite verses that might be a great place to start. I thought that was helpful. And so then we get into kind of the meat of the book. And first they remind you that it's okay to be messy. You're not going to be perfect as you start. Um, they have, look at this. This is Melissa's work. If you see anything that's pastel, it's Melissa. And then if you see something that looks a little bit more modern, it's usually Kate. Um, but isn't this gorgeous? I aspire to be able to be that artful. Um, Kate talks about maybe using different surfaces even beyond just sketchbook paper or watercolor paper or the Bible. You can also use, these are old hymnal pages. This is making greeting cards with verses. And then I thought this was hysterical. She said, if you're really brave, you might even consider painting the cover of your journaling Bible once you're comfortable working with acrylic paints. And here she has in fact done that. And that is like advanced Bible journaling 201 instead of 101. So then they're going to take you through a project for each medium. So the first one is watercolor, I'm sorry, colored pencils. And this is Melissa. She's going to walk you through nine steps to building this layout. And so she's starting with a pencil, erasable pencil, just getting in the buildings. And then she's going to put in a banner so that she can do lettering. And then she's going to put more details. And once she's happy with the drawing itself, then she's going to put in a light layer of color, just a base color then some shading with some tips on how to shade, then some highlights, and then the background color, which she does with cross hatching, and then you end up with this for Leviticus 19.15. Isn't that amazing? So again, that's what's so great about this book is they don't just throw you to the wolves and say, here, make this. They give you all the nine steps in between. 
The next one gets into acrylics, and we're going to do a chalkboard background. This is with Kate, I believe. And so we have a black acrylic, like a matte, and then we have beautiful iridescent gold and white. This is like Bible journaling triple advanced, 301, <laughs> instead of 101 or 201. Absolutely gorgeous. And some more examples. Then Melissa is going to bring you into watercolor, but she's going to start with a watercolor pencil. So she's going to draw in, again, with an erasable pencil, her drawing and her lettering, and she's going to give you some samples so you can get some nice flowers and botanical elements here and a bumblebee. And so you can start with her from just basic shapes to filling in details to kind of making it your own. She's going to put all these together, make this drawing, then she's going to color in with the colored pencils, and then she's going to bring in water. And she talks about the different ways to use colored pencils that are for watercolors. You can't do this with regular colored pencils. They have to be watercolor pencils. But this is what the finished product looks like of that one. So dainty and beautiful. Um, then she's showing, let's see, this is Kate. She's combining some lettering in different ways where the, the letters are basically the focus. Then we get into true watercolor. So this is Melissa again, and she's going to outline her design in pencil and then come in with straight watercolors out of either a pan or a tube. And this is going to start, look how... Look how we start at like step one and we end up with this as our final product. That is absolutely gorgeous. Then we get into pen and ink. So it's just going to be black and white. We're going to again start with pencil, go over it with ink, with technical drawing pens, brush pen more acrylic ideas, brush pen ideas, more botanicals to play with. Okay, then we have the swan, and this is the one that I wanna do first. I think this is so beautiful. So she's using Psalm 23 as her kind of meditation for this, and she sketched out this landscape with a swan. And then you can go back to the beginning where she showed you step by step how to draw that swan. And she's using a china pencil, china marker, to keep that swan nice and bright and white. And then step by step how to paint in the details and the shading. And then this is the final. And isn't that beautiful? He restores my soul. I'm definitely going to do that one as my first project. I'm stippling, not my favorite, but it's in here. There's a couple more spread examples. Oh my gosh, look at that. That one is Melissa. These are some more samples from Melissa. Look at this. Psalm 32, seven, my hiding place. Psalm 119, 25 through 28, when the storm is raging, you are the calm. That is truly fine art. And then I said Kate is a little bit more modern, so here's Kate's look. Psalm 77, and she has, uh, you are the God who works wonders, and see how she's done the lettering. And then this iridescent gold to the bottom, and white or clear to the top. That's a really neat way to work in lettering. Look at this one. Their actual hand print in the iridescent gold. And then acrylic on top with the flowers. So again, lots and lots and lots of amazing ideas here. I checked this out from my library. This is what I do a lot of the times. I will check out a book like this and I will say, okay, how many pages did I mark? If I marked like two pages, then it was a nice book. I'm glad I checked it out. If I mark 
all these pages. I make a video about it for you and then I go buy the book so that it's on my bookshelf and I have it for handy reference and that's the case with this one. So thank you Melissa and Kate. Your book is fantastic. I highly recommend it. Again, link in the description to the book. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section. Otherwise, thank you so much for visiting me and please come back to see more journaling and planning and anything to do with making your paper look pretty. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.